Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on page two of Yuletide, which is Blue Fern's new, one of their newest collections. So this is going to be a pretty simple page and it actually is turning out to be, I really love the paper by the way, turning out to be a really good beginner's um, scrapbook album. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit different um, and kind of stagger and layer things a little bit differently. So what I'm doing on page two, and you know, page one was very simple with just a side pocket. Um, all the complexity comes in with the fussy cutting, um, not necessarily the flap design. So what I'm going to do is um, layer these two four by fours. And I went ahead and built them because I was actually wanting to see what they would look like before I committed to going down this path for you guys. So you're gonna start with two of these, you're going to start with an eight and a quarter by four and one eighth. Eight and a quarter by four and one eighth. You're gonna score it four and one eighth. Now what I typically do is, um, the width of your paper is eight and a half by 11. So what I would do is I would trim it at um, four and one eighth. And then since it's um, eight and a half inches across, I would just score it in half. And then I put it down in the trimmer folded and, and trim it to uh, four and one eighth. And that way it turns out with this very crisp edge. Uh, and there's nothing you can do with that, you know, eighth of an inch that's left over anyway. So that's my recommendation is to trim, take your eight and a half by 11, trim it um, across the eight and a half inch uh, side at four and one eighth. So come down on the 11 inch side, trim it at four and one eighth, score this piece in half and then trim it at four and one eighth and do that twice. So these are gonna open um, opposite of each other, like so, and they're gonna be stacked and closed. Now I had originally done it just on the cream card stock and it just didn't have enough pop. So what I've done is cut two mats um, that are four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So you're gonna mat the back side of the card, just the back side of the card. So in the um, closed position, you're going to see the mat, and then we're gonna stagger them like so. So you won't see the mat here, and that's because we want to be able to open both of these. And that gives us additional photo space. So these will fit four by fours on the top, and then two more on the inside. Now, if you don't want that much photo space, then you just simply make this a flat panel that you would ap apply directly to your pocket page um, designer paper, like so. But I wanted to have a, an additional uh, space for photos, so that's what I did. So now given all of that, we can go ahead and apply this um, designer paper, which is from the eight by eight collection pack. So I'm using a 12 by 12 and eight by eight collection packs in this album. So we're gonna go ahead and lay that down. And then the next thing we're going to do is apply um, our magnets here, and then we'll add them here. <clears throat> yeah. It's hard to cover either one of the sides because they're just so pretty. I think um, paper collections that are like this sort of lend themselves to more of this sort of layered photos and less with the, the flaps that you've seen me use in, in the past. Um, when you use a lot of flaps, it, it's really good to have a nice crisp contrast as you're going from a flap to the base page. And this type of patterns, it really doesn't do that for you. So that's why I'm doing it a little bit different. And I've done out, I've done some like this before. Okay, and again, this is Blue Fern Yuletide. Isn't it pretty? I wish you guys could feel this paper. It feels so good. Okay, we're gonna add some magnets here. So I'm gonna wind up putting designer paper on all these sides, including this side. So we're gonna go ahead and place a magnet here, and then uh, a magnet here. It's gonna hold it closed, and we're gonna glue this whole panel down. But we're gonna add the magnets first. I'm going to use my nice wide tape to apply the magnet. And the brown cardstock that I'm using is Basil, and I don't know what it's called. 
I'm trying to find the name of it, but I don't really see it. It's a very dark brown, but any dark brown will work. And any of the dark brown accents that I use are going to be on static. There's not going to be any scoring involved. Um, they'll just lay flat. So any weight is appropriate, um, and you don't have to worry about it cracking because I'm only going to use them in a static matte form. And it just happened to be something I had in my stash. It was one of the papers I was trying to test to make base albums out of, um, but it was too thick and it would crack when I scored it. So it's good for base mats, but not for any kind of scoring. Oops, I guess I can do this right now. I was gonna say, I don't really, I didn't really mean to do that. I need to place the other magnet first. Okay. everybody's doing good oh I had such a good time at the expo and meeting people it was so fun so fun everybody was so nice and so happy to be getting out and crafting with people again it was a really good experience okay So that's ready. So that's one. We're going to go ahead and do that on the other side. And remember, they're going to be opening away from each other. Um, that's the only way. Um, well, the other way would be you could have a photo here and then you could stagger it like so. And they could both open the same way. So it's really up to you how you want to orient these two. But they, one of them is going to get tucked inside the other, and I've opted to do them opening away from each other. It'll work both ways. So this one still needs magnets. Now, the I'm putting both the magnets as close as possible. This um, blue fern paper, I haven't used it a lot, but it feels really thick, thicker than Graphic 45, for example. So I, I want to be cognizant of how many layers I'm putting uh, between my magnets and the blue fern paper, just because it's quite thick. And in this case, um, we'll have one layer of blue fern and uh, one layer of blue fern here, and then a magnet, and then of course photos, which are thinner. Oops, that's not right. I have to make sure I've got it down the right way. There we go. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is locate these on the pocket page, figure out where I want them. Now, I really like this detail, so I think I'm leaning this direction, which would mean this needs to open that way, and this would open this way, to kind of showcase this. Now, the other option is to change the stagger this way, and I don't think I wanna cut that off, so I'm gonna do it this way. And I just wanna share with you guys what my thought process is as I'm shifting things around and trying to figure out where they go. There's my magnet. I wanna verify it's gonna open in the direction I plan. I guess it does. Okay, now my next decision is how far in from the sides. And I'm thinking about a half inch. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna come in from the top down a half inch and from the right side in a half inch. I'm gonna eyeball it at first and then I'm going to quickly adjust it. And I'm going from the edge of the pocket page, not from the edge of the designer paper. Okay, that looks close, so I'm going to test it. Make sure it's not drifting up or down. Slight nudge, and we're in. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing down here, is I'm going to come in a half inch from the bottom and from the left-hand side. Make sure it's opening the right way.
um, I am using, now remember to open this one. This is critical. Are you going to glue it closed? I'm using, um, I'm going to actually come in a little bit more because I really don't want to cover that up. And I'm going to come up about a half inch. Okay, there we go. And actually, I didn't want to put, I'm going to, I'm going to start over. I don't want glue here because I want to be able to tuck my photo in. So I'm going to let that dry for a second. And then I'm actually going to put a little piece of paper in here so it won't stick. That's not the piece I want. Here we go. So it won't stick. It'll stick to this and I can pull it out. You don't have to do it this way, but I want to leave it open. I'm going to come up about a half inch. And test that real quick. It's crooked, I can tell, but I'll fix it. There's a half inch. Okay, so the goal would be that I could stash a photo right here, right? So I want all this glued, but not this part. And I'm just going to keep this here so it doesn't stick. And then I'm going to press the rest of it in place. There we go. Okay. Now, from the same 8x8, um, I um, cut apart. Uh, this is the opposite side, I think it is. Yes, this is the back side of the same print. So I'm going to pull this in real quick. So this is page three, and they're going to go side by side. So I took this image as the base here. This image is going to be the base on page three. And then I cut apart. I'm using two of the um, eight and a half or eight by eight collection packs. So I took another one of these images, and that's where these this came from. Okay. These are going to be the cover of my two cards. So I'm going to give this some more time to dry completely. I'm going to cover this. I can't tell you how much I like this paper. It is so nice. It, the print as well as just the quality of the paper is stunning. Okay, there we go. All that sticking a little, which is what we're worried about, right? So I'm going to let that dry some more. And I'm actually going to trim this down so I can go ahead and cover the front. This is going to go here. And I just think that's so pretty too. All right. I really think that brown helps it pop. Pop the cream and then just really, you know, make a statement against um, the pattern paper that this is all going down on. Isn't that neat? Neat, neat, neat. Okay. So you can do it either way, and I think I would do it this way because I really like that. So that would be pretty much page two. So the next thing is I need to give this a little time to dry, and then we're going to come back and cover the inside um, of both of these panels. And you'll see when I come to cover this one how I tuck it in, and with the idea being that this remains... Um, open for you to tuck a photo if you want. If you don't think you're going to put a photo here, if you're going to maybe journal here, then um, you can go ahead and glue that tab down. But I'm going to leave it open so I have options. And I'm going to leave this tucked in here. So if it sticks to anything, it's not sticking to this. I can get this out later. And worst case, I could trim around it and then know that there's no glue behind it. 
but hopefully I'll just let it dry and we can come back to that in a few minutes and cover the inside or the B sides of these two, um, what I call cards. So that's it for page two and I'm loving this paper. I know you guys are gonna love it. So that's it for page two. So I'll be back soon um, to do the B side. And then also this is um, something I fussy cut that I think I'm gonna use as an embellishment, but I'm first gonna finish page three and come back and check it out um, and see uh, what my thoughts are after I do um, page three. Okay, that's it. Um, I'll be back soon. Okay, everyone, I've picked out my patterns for the B side on page two. And this again is from the um, eight by eight collection pack. And it has the skater on the front, but I'm gonna use the flip side. I think this is such a pretty print. It might wind up on the back side of the cover or maybe even the cover, I like it so much. But I'm gonna keep saying that because I, th I feel that way about all the prints. All the prints are my favorites. And I went ahead and inked the edges. And this is just an eight by eight and four, and four quarters. So you can use um, one sheet to cover the B side of page two. making sure I get a good seal all the way around the magnet. Now this is gonna get tucked underneath. gorgeous. So it's pretty easy to see, you know, how you're going to place photos here. And these are four by four. So I would recommend a three and a half by three and a half photo. So you still get to see this beautiful border or even three by threes. Could even be like, you know, how you shoot a series of photos and you could kind of show the progression. Anyways, that is it for page two. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I am gonna pull this back in after I finish page three um, to add some embellishments. So I'll be back with that, but that's gonna be part of the page three video.